So what does the autonomic nervous system do? The autonomic nervous system primarily pumps blood flow where we need it, when we need it. And it does it really quickly and efficiently, ideally, if it's working well. Uh, what we are concerned with is getting blood flow to the brain for most of our patients. So we're gonna, that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, when we, when I stand up, if I come from like this and I'm laying down, let's say, and I stand up really quickly, my blood flow drops down to my lower extremities because of gravity. I only have so much blood in my body. I only have about five to six liters. So I can't, it's not enough blood to be everywhere at once. So it drops down to here. I need a system to be able to pump it to the areas that I need it, especially in this case, the brain. Um, and so that's the autonomic nervous system. That's primarily what it does. It uses this balance of the sympathetics and parasympathetics to pump that blood because one of the systems increases heart rate and constricts blood vessels. The other one slows down the heart and dilates blood vessels. Because if I wanna push blood along in my, in my blood vessels, I have to squeeze one part and dilate another part. I may have to do that continuously to get blood somewhere, but I definitely need the ability to constrict and dilate, and I need a balance between the two. Uh, what happens with people that come into our office, or most of these people with what's called dysautonomia, or autonomic dysregulation, is that really means there's an imbalance in this system. Primarily what happens is the sympathetic system becomes too high. It doesn't get modulated or inhibited by this system. This is kind of the para, think about it like the parent. The sympathetic, it's like the child that needs to be parented, it needs to be controlled or modulated or taken care of. And so when, when people come into my office, parts of the brain that would contribute to the parasympathetic help are usually not functioning as well as they should. And so therefore we can't modulate this sympathetic system so we get high heart rate in constriction uh, which then reduces blood flow to the brain because the heart's working faster but the blood vessels are too narrow to pump as much blood flow to the brain as we need. So we need that ability to dilate our blood vessels, which allows our brain to receive all the blood flow and oxygen it needs. That's really important. And the system, it lives throughout the entire brain. There's, there's a lot of networks as the central autonomic network. Okay, you told me not to say nucleus, I didn't yet. And there's the uh, brainstem, lower brainstem area that really houses most of the control for this but it's the communication between uh, different parts of the brain and the body or these blood vessels that uh, really allows blood flow to get to the brain. So it's like a circuit. So if we, if we stand up too fast, like I said, all the blood flow goes to our legs, we need information to send, uh, we, need, we need little, we need information to get to our brain quickly so that it can quickly dictate where blood flow goes. Uh, when we can do that, we feel good. But when people don't have this ability to regulate where blood flow goes in the body and do it really quickly and accurately, what happens is when we stand up, we make it dizzy or lightheaded. Um, we get headaches, we get migraines, we get overly uh, overwhelmed easily, we get fatigued easily, we get this thing called brain fog that everybody talks about. Uh, really that's just not getting enough blood flow to the brain. We get s stressed or anxious really easily um, because the system is our fight or flight system. We're in this fight or flight mode all the time. We're in this stressful state that is meant to be only very short term. Another term for this is fast acting and this is slow acting. But this, you can think about this like slowing things down. This thing speeds things up, you know, and you're, you know, you're, you're in a rush, you're, you're, wor you're worried, you're anxious. This is like, you know, it's all good. And we're just gonna digest and eat some food and relax. So we really want a nice balance of this system, but especially this. And so how we can do that is through tilt table rehabilitation, uh, some uh, nerve stimulation, right? Nerve activating uh, nerves, especially the trigeminal nerve. Uh, with certain aspects of, uh, of nerve stimulation. We use vestibular rehab because all of these systems, they talk to that lower brainstem, which is where all these things live because they need good information from other parts of our brain to know how to react. Do I react with spite or flight or do I react with a relaxation or digestion? Um, do I dilate my blood vessels or do I constrict them? So if we, we're doing that, you know, 
it's autonomic is another term for autonomic is automatic. It should be automatic, but the system gets a little bit off kilter in the automatic nature of it, uh, skewed, and it goes always towards, let's say, the sympathetic. Rarely do you see this happening more often. It's typically this. Does that answer most of it? Yeah, makes All sense. Right.